on Wine News. Meralco to hike rates this month. President Rodrigo Duterte threatens to break open the warehouses of rice hoarders. And Nayong Filipino executives sacked over grossly disadvantageous contracts. Good evening. The Manila Electric Company or Meralco is set to increase its rates this month. Monoxon tells us why. Power consumers would have to pay more for their August electricity bills as the Manila Electric Company or Meralco announces increase in its rates by 2 centavos per kilowatt hour. This translates to additional 5 pesos for a household that consumes 200 kilowatt each month and as much as 13 pesos for those consuming 500 kilowatt per month. Meralco explains the adjustment is due to higher generation charges or the cost of electricity from producers. According to Meralco spokesperson Joe Saldariaga, the 5.7% increase in inflation last July was offset by the slumping power prices in the wholesale electricity spot market or WESEM. Kahit pa paano ho eh, na ma-manage naman as far as yung uh, presyo ng uh, uh, electricity is concerned. Following the power rate hike announcement, an energy expert says the Philippines remains as the second country in Asia with the highest power rates. Japan tops the list with more than 12 pesos per kilowatt hour. Philippines in second and Singapore in third with almost 9 pesos per kilowatt hour rate, followed by Hong Kong and Thailand with more than 6 peso rate. According to John Morris, an international energy consultant, some Asian countries have lower rates because of the government subsidy. This include Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Korea, and Taiwan. Subsidies in these countries reach 800 billion US dollars a year. If the Philippine government will subsidize power, it will need funds amounting to more than 120 billion pesos. Morris suggests adding more power plants to lower the country's power rates. More competition means cheaper cost of service. Obviously, the biggest component is generation. So if you wanted to bring rates down, that's the place to go looking. It makes up almost two-thirds of the tariff. Meanwhile, Meralco assures that the implementation of the second package of the tax reform law next year will not affect power rates. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. President Rodrigo Duterte warns to use the full force of law to open the warehouses of alleged rice hoarders. Rosa Licos tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte definitely knows who the rice hoarders are in the country. It was reported that he recently called one of them to order that person to empty his warehouses in 72 hours. He knows who the rice hoarders are and where their warehouses are. Presidential spokesperson Roque says the chief executive is ready to utilize the police force to forcibly open the warehouses and confiscate the hoarded rice. So ang kanyang continuing warning is tumigil na kayo kasi kilala ng presidente kung sino kayo. And this time around, he made it very clear. Um, he will not hesitate to break open the warehouses, sue him. But he will break open the warehouses if it becomes an issue of national security. Meanwhile, resolving rampant rice hoarding and allowing rice importation for all are some of the measures seen by the Duterte administration to alleviate the impact of surging inflation. Based on the report of the Philippine Statistics Authority, the inflation in the country has risen to 5.7% in July. This is the highest recorded in a five-year time. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. President Duterte fires all board members of the Nayong Filipino Foundation. According to presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, this is connected to a 70-year property lease contract, which the president considers as grossly disadvantageous to the government. Roque says the chief executive made the announcement during a regular cabinet meeting on Monday after expressing annoyance over the continuing corruption in the government. The Nayong Filipino Foundation is an attached agency of the Department of Tourism. He cited the case of Nayong Filipino, which leased government property for 
a ridicul ridiculous long period of time of 70 years beyond the lifetime of anyone. And he considered this as a contract which was grossly disadvantageous to government. Meanwhile, the Council of Metro Manila Mayors is set to create a policy for a uniform class suspension. John Nano tells us why. The Metro Manila Council agrees to form a technical working group that will create a policy for a uniform class suspension. MMC Chairman and Quezon City Mayor Herbert Bautista says the policy will serve as the basis of the Metro Manila mayors on when to cancel classes, especially during inclement weather. Local government officials are often bashed in social media because of late announcements. Sa loob ng dalawang linggo, starting today, mag-meeting under a TWG yung lahat ng local DRRM officers with CHED, DepEd, Pag-asa, DPWH, OCD para magbuo at magbalangkas ng isang polisiya para sa Metro Manila na siyang submit sa Metro Manila mayors for their approval para magkaroon ng uniform at uh, tamang basihan ng pagdideklara na walang pasok. Bautista adds the move was prompted by the threats received by Makati City Mayor Abby Binay in social media for late or non-announcement of class suspension. Binay claims that some netizens threatened to blast her house or to hit her with a sniper bullet during flag racing ceremony. Dahil sa bumaha ng konti, hindi nagdeklara ng walang pasok, nagsumbong ngayon sa 888 ni Presidente, nag-issue ang DILG na isususpend yung mayor dahil uh, hindi siya nakapagdeklara kagad. Eh, parang uh, it becomes unfair to the mayors. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority supports the Metro Manila Council's position saying each local government unit has different situation in times of calamities. Hindi ko nga maintindihan ito mga estudyante natin. No? Tuwan-tuwa. Pagka, pagka walang pasok, pero pag may araw naman, babatikusin naman ang mga mayor. Of course, yung mga mayor natin, nagre-relay lang yan sa mga information din na binabato sa kanila. The technical working group has been instructed to submit the final copy of their proposed policy in the next two weeks. Joanano UNTV News and Rescue, Mandaluyong City. The Philippine National Police believes that the enactment of the Philippine Identification System Act will help improve the country's peace and order situation. Leia Ilagan tells us why. The Philippine National Police welcomed the signing of the Philippine Identification System or PhilSys Act of 2018, which will provide a single national ID for Filipinos. According to PNP Chief Police Director General Oscar Albayalde, an efficient national ID system offers benefits to practical applications in census, taxation, election registration, banking and other transactions with government agencies. Albayaldi adds that over 106 million Filipinos will benefit the law as they will assured of access to a wide range of government services and privileges. They will be given chance to, ano, hindi naman kasi overnight yan makakuha ka ng, ano, with the millions of Filipinos who wants to have a national, uh, an ID. Mm -hmm. no? I'm sure uh, hindi naman na, uh, ano yan, mahabang panahon yan para makakuha lahat ng ating mga kababayan ng uh, ID. The PNP chief also believes that law will end bureaucratic red tape and provide protection for Filipinos against terrorism and other security threats. The national ID system could also help improve the country's peace and order situation. Maganda yan. I think uh, malaking uh, bagay yan para dun sa lalong lalo na dun sa peace and order natin. No? Napakalaking bagay yan yung uh, national ID system natin. Makakatulong sa sa pag-improve lalo na sa ating uh, peace and order yan. The PhilSys Act was signed by President Rodrigo Duterte on Monday. It aims to consolidate all basic information of all Filipinos so that a standard ID would be issued by the government. The card will only contain 13 sets of information, including the full name and photo of its owner, address, gender, blood type, place, and date of birth and marital status, more information will be stored in the Filsis Registry. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, Come Krami. The Social Watch Philippines Youth Group urged senators to pass the Universal Health Care Bill along with Senate Bill 1605 or the excise tax on tobacco products. The group stressed that the Senate should support the passage of the two bills to boost the country's health care. 
Charlie Barredo will tell us why. The members of the Social Watch Philippines youth group gathered outside the Senate building on Tuesday to urge senators to pass the Universal Health Care Bill. The group stresses that the passage of these two bills should be prioritized in order to boost the health care in the country, especially to those who do not have access nor the means to get proper health care. Ngayon po kasi hindi pa rin siya naganap na batas at naniniwala kami na kailangan-kailangan po ito ng mga mamaya, lalong-lalo na ng mga nasa laylayan ng lipunan na walang kapasidad na makapumunta sa mga ospital. No? According to Del Polanco, the SWP Youth Group Coordinator, there are many flaws in the current universal health care system in the country that the government should address. He stressed that the passage of this bill will enable the public to get checkups before their condition worsens. Polanco also underscored herbal medication in the provinces is still being practiced and that prescriptions are being given to anyone even without conducting checkups. The SWP Youth Group also called on the lawmakers to approve Senate Bill 1605 or the excise tax on tobacco products. The group also adds that cigarette taxes should be increased and be utilized as funds for universal health care. Yes, uh, we're pushing for tax tobacco to the max and so far, sa ngayon po, ang sinusuportahan po namin, yung pinakamataas na proposal yung kay Senator JV na 90 pesos increase sa, ano, sa per pack ng mga sigarilyo. Charlie Barreto, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The House Committee on Human Rights approves on their first reading a resolution seeking to extend the deadline for the encashment of claims granted to recognize martial law victims. Ray Palayo tells us why. Recognized victim of abuse during martial law, see a sliver of hope in claiming their reparation pay as the proposal aiming to extend the deadline for the claims and cashment hurdles the first reading at the House Committee level. Earlier, the House Committee on Human Rights approved in first reading a resolution that will allow the victims more time in processing the necessary documents to prove that they are indeed the recognized recipients. Though the committee will not be able to complete the passage of the resolution before the said date, its chairperson, Cheryl Deloso Montanilla, assures that once the bill is signed, the fund can still be withdrawn. The Human Rights Claims Board has earlier said that the money allotted for the compensation would be returned to the National Treasury if it is not claimed within the deadline. Kung mas second reading ngayon, week na ito, may possibility na third reading by next week. And then, kung wala namang complications sa uh, versions, so hindi naaabot ng BICAM, uh, generally ipipresent na lang sa Presidente for signature. Commission on Human Rights Chairperson Tito Gascon, meanwhile, hopes that reparation efforts would serve its purpose. These checks represent state reparation for violations that occurred during martial law. And ultimately, we should not allow technicalities to undermine the principle that the claimants should be compensated. Gascon is also pushing for the recognition of other human rights violation victims even beyond the martial law era. Ultimately, Your Honor, we should consider that perhaps human rights victims generally, even after martial law, should be entitled to some other form of reparation. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, Use and Rescue, Quezon City. Olympic organizers are stepping up the security in the Tokyo 2020 Games with the addition of facial recognition system. Here's why from Leslie Longbowen. Tokyo 2020 will be the first Olympics to use facial recognition technology to increase security around all venues. Games organizers have linked up with Japanese telecommunications and information technology giant NEC to develop the first system of this kind to be implemented at an Olympics. The technology, which was demonstrated to the media at an event in the Japanese capital, will use IC chips within identification cards to automatically verify the identity of those entering over 40 venues. More than 300,000 athletes and game staff will have to submit photographs to a database before the Olympics start in July 2020. 
Tokyo 2020's head of security, Tsuyoshi Iwashita, explains that the technology was particularly important due to the tight spaces around Olympic venues and to reduce waiting time in the hot Tokyo summer sun. Every time they enter the facility, they have to do a security check. The system will not be aimed at spectators and will instead concentrate on strengthening security and decreasing waiting times for athletes. NEC says they tested the technology during the Rio 2016 Olympics and that the technology has already been implemented in various locations including airports. More than 40 facilities including the main stadium, international broadcast center, the Olympic Village and so on will have the facial recognition system. Athletes, game staff, volunteers, and the media will have this recognition. During the demonstration to media, the technology correctly identified a string of people, including those in wheelchairs and of varying heights. NEC believes the technology will work accurately 99.7% of the time. Leslie Longboan, UNTV News and Rescue. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up from where Rina Villamor Camara left off. I am Angelo Jago Castro III. Here are the headlines. The lower house seeks to convince the Senate to convene as constituent assembly to discuss the charter change bill. Senators threaten to slash, slash the Presidential Communications Office proposed 2019 budget amid furor over controversial federalism video and substantive federalism discussion to still continue despite Moka Uson's controversial video according to Malacanang. The House Minority Leadership squabble has ended after the House of Representatives approved a motion recognizing Quezon 3rd District Representative Danilo Suarez as Minority Leader. Several lawmakers attempted to block the motion, including those who belong to opposing groups such as the Liberal Party Macabayan Bloc and the group of ousted Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez and former Majority Floor Leader Rodolfo Farinas. Uh, through a Viva Voce vote or a vote of ayes and nays, most of the lawmakers voted for Suarez. But according to Albay Representative Ed Lagman, the decision to retain Suarez as a minority leader with members of the majority voting for him is a clear defiance of the House rules and thus constitu constitutes legal debates. Congressman Kimbo, meanwhile, plans to question Suarez's retention as minority leader before the Supreme Court. We need to take it to the Supreme Court para may stability din para sa, sa House. Ito yung hindi naman magiging katanggap-tanggap at tingin ko talagang isang dagok at nakakahiya para sa ating kongreso na magkaroon ng ganitong karanasan ng minority leader ay inappoint ng majority. The leadership, the leadership of the House of Representatives is looking at tapping the members of the Consultative Committee to reach out to the Senate. Grace Kassin tells us why. The House Committee on Constitutional Amendments will enlist the help of the members of the Consultative Committee to convince the Senate to convene as Constituent Assembly to discuss the proposed shift to federal government. This after House Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo filed a resolution expressing the sentiments of the members of the lower house to vote separately on charter change in a CONAS. We will enlist the help of uh, former Senate President uh, Aquilino Pimentel Jr. and the uh, rest of the members of the Constitutional Committee who are around find ways that we can really talk it out with uh, our Senate uh, counterpart. Sana yung ating mga senador, uh, meron naman nananatili sa kanila na pagmamahal sa bayan. Kalimutan muna natin yung... Uh, Mga politika na nagahati-hati sa ating bayan. According to Senator Manny Pacquiao, the senators would have to talk about the proposal. Pagdating sa mga ganyan na uh, mahirap pa magbigay ng comment kasi marami kami, mag-uusap-usap pa kami kung ano magiging uh, uh, direction talaga namin, final direction. So, 
pag-uusapan naman namin yan. The Law Source Committee will not discuss the rules of procedure of the Assembly and the substance of the proposed new constitution as directed by Arroyo. It's only a committee for us to find out what the problems are. No, that will be all be done. That will all be done in the Assembly, Jane. This will be for the committee. No, it will waste time. We have to, well, anyway, we have to allow uh, them to uh, immediately uh, ask them to help convince Correct, the correct. Uh, convince the Senate. Correct, correct. Convince the Senate. Anyway, uh, I, I will uh, follow your directions, ma'am. Yeah. And, uh, no committee I, hearings on the substance. Correct. Oh. And, uh, because we leave that for the Constituent Assembly. Correct. Veloso has previously said that they will use as working draft the version submitted by the CONCOM. It states that the President will lead the federal government without a Prime Minister. Vice President will be from the party of the President and two Senators will be elected in each region. District representatives will remain, but the party list will be replaced by political party. Four high courts will be established, the Constitutional Court, Administrative, Federal Electoral, and Supreme Court. Grace Cassin, UNTV, News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Substantive discussions on federalism will still continue following the uproar on the federaliz federalism video posted in the blog of Presidential Communications Assistant Secretary Moka Uson. Presidential spokesperson Harry Rocky says that though the video got people's interest into federalism, President Duterte agrees that a more comprehensive discussion is necessary for the public to understand the issue. Roque also says that Duterte is not concerned over the controversy sparked by the video and regarded it as freedom of expression. That's the challenge now. How to transform this new interest on federalism spurned by this controversy in explaining why we want this, this change to the Constitution towards federalism. Lawmakers are, quest are questioning the proposed hike in the 2019 budget of the Presidential Communications Operations Office amid the furor on the video posted by Assistant Secretary Moka Uson. Nel Maribuhok will tell us why. Some senators are challenging the Presidential Communications Operations Office to justify its proposed budget increase amid the uproar caused by the video posted by Assistant Secretary Moka Uzon. The proposed budget of PCOO for 2019 is 1.41 billion pesos, higher than this year's 1.38 billion pesos. Senator Gray spoke questions PCOO's request for more budget, noting the deep cuts in the funds of several agencies in the 2019 proposed appropriations. Bakit tataasan ang isang ahensya katulad ng PCOO? Ngayon, importante ang komunikasyon, pero nung klaseng communication. As deliberations on the 2019 national budget begin today, the senators vow to thoroughly scrutinize the budget of PCOO and other government agencies facing corruption allegations. Some lawmakers earlier hit the agency after Usan posted the video in her blog, which they describe as inappropriate and lewd. Dadaan din sa butas ng karayom ang, ang budget ng PCOO. Tiyak ko naman yung mga kasama kong mga senador dito ay talagang titimbangin. Kung gagamit din sa politika, lalo na't mag-i-eviction, eh, medyo ng kino-question mark ko yan. Sana wag na maulit muli. Uh, kaya lang ang inaalala ko sa pag-defense sa PCOO budget, given the fact na marami ang, marami ang nag-react, medyo balagay ko maraming magtatanong. But Senator Manny Pacquiao defends the Presidential Communications Group, expressing satisfaction over its performance. Masipag naman sila, uh, nagampanan, ginagampanan yung trabaho nila at uh, nakikita naman natin. At uh, dadaan naman sila sa uh, parang cross examination dito sa, sa Senate. Akbayan Representative Tom Villarin has earlier pushed for a PCOO 0 2019 budget. So ito po yung pinapasahod natin kay Moka Uson na ang ginagawa lang ay uh, ginawang kabaret no? yung uh, Office of the President. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The Supreme Court denies the petition of detained Senator Laila de Lima to attend the oral arguments on the Philippines' withdrawal of its membership from the International Criminal Court. My Bermudez will tell us why. Senator 
Senator Laila de Lima failed in her bid to personally argue against the Philippines' withdrawal from the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. This after the Supreme Court voted 10-2 to junk the motion of de Lima to attend and represent herself at next week's oral arguments for the petitions questioning the legality of the said withdrawal. The opposition senators previously asked the High Court to declare as invalid or ineffective Manila's pullout from the establishing treaty of the ICC without the concurrence of at least two-thirds of the Senate, which ratified it in 2011. De Lima was supposed to be the counsel of the said lawmakers for the oral arguments scheduled on August 14. The court found no compelling reason to have Senator De Lima personally appear during the conduct of oral arguments, noting that her capacity to appear for herself must yield to the fundamental restrictions on her liberty borne by her current detention. The High Court also argues that no Senate or House members should represent themselves as counsel in a pending case. Senator Ba Makino, the Lima's co-petitioner, expresses dismay over the decision. Well, uh, it's unfortunate na dideny po yung kanyang uh, pag-appear sa Supreme Court. Palagay ko, hindi naman siya security risk, di ba, na dideny pa po yun. It's an important case no, to determine kung ano ba yung role ng Senado dun sa mga international treaties. The Philippines' withdrawal from the ICC was ordered by the Duterte administration amid backlashes against his war on drugs. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Some flyers are split over the Quiet Skies program being implemented by the U.S. Transportation Security administration after it was recently made public. Kat Carriedo tells us why. An in-flight surveillance program known as Quiet Skies has drawn criticisms from lawmakers as well as from privacy and civil rights advocates. It was implemented by the U.S. Transportation Security Administration by assigning federal air marshals to flights to monitor individuals who are not formally under investigation and are not on a terrorist watch list. The agency says it is a practical way to prevent terrorism during air travel as the program analyzes the travel pattern and possible affiliations of an American passenger. Each day, the TSA monitors at least 50 passengers, or almost 20,000 per year. However, the agency clarifies it is not intended to surveil ordinary Americans, but to ensure that passengers and flight crew are protected during air travel. Since it came to light in July, the program has drawn harsh criticisms and raised concerns on racial and religious discrimination. I could say that it's racial profiling because we can't really say that people are basing it on their action, lalo na ngayon yung tension sa immigration. It's a practical in the sense na uh, gumagastos ang government para dyan, uh, without knowing or they're not sure about the person mm -hmm. and they're just prejudging it. But some Filipinos who frequently fly see nothing wrong with the program if it is intended to keep another act of terrorism from occurring. I think even before nangyayari na yan, hindi lang sinasabi. Ngayon lang na broadcast. Uh, basta sa uh, ikabubuti ng mga tao at um, sa safety, okay lang yun. Kung wala ka namang itatago, Bakit ka mag, ano, di ba? magiging against dun sa, sa program ng government? Eh, kung ang goal naman nila, ang objective nila ay eh, security, I'm for that, yung security ng flight. Several lawmakers and watchdog groups have called for the program to be dropped immediately for fears that the arbitrary surveillance on unsuspecting air passengers will guarantee disproportionate harassment by federal officials based on racial and religious profiling. Kath Carriedo, UNTV News and Rescue, USA.